I've had patients come in and they've been diagnosed ADD, autism, Asperger's, and multiple other, other issues, and it's none of those. And, and it's all of those. And it doesn't really matter because it's the brain waves. And if the brain waves are out of balance, we're able to find that with the brain map and we're able to teach those brain waves to come back into that good direction. Well, now the inside of my brain is much cleaner. It's clearer. I feel like I'm able to handle uncomfortable situations in a way where I can actually respond without my heart racing and me panicking. I'm not as anxious, near as anxious, and I am actually have unexplainable peace, um, especially the last probably month and a half, um, and that's after starting the, the neurofeedback. When we look at the two-step process, the first step is that brain map. All we're doing is monitoring those brain waves. So as soon as we get that information, we can upload it to the normative database, over 160,000 brains, and we figure out what exactly is going on in that person's brain when we compare it to where it should be. Remember, the brain map was FDA approved in 2013 as a diagnostic tool for ADD. So this has gone through the process for the, the FDA to look at it and agree that if a certain range is out, then that person is going to be experiencing ADD. And this is the same for anxiety, the same for brain injuries, all these different things. So when we look at the brain map, there's four different ranges that we look at, all the way from delta, the sleep wave, all the way up to the beta, which is our fast focus wave and everything in between. So we know if one of those is too high or too low, we're going to be having different symptoms. And from there, we're able to come up with a protocol and say, oh, you know what? This person's not sleeping. Well, it's because that sleep wave is too high. Let's train that down. It's not our job to diagnose someone off the brain map, but it is our job to find where those brain waves are out of balance. And once we do, we can train them to do something different, to go into that good range so they can experience life like they want. Neurofeedback is based on operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is our ability to teach the brain to do something different. So it's a feedback reward system. So if the brain goes out of the range it's supposed to be in, we're going to teach it to come back into that good range, just like learning how to ride a bike. Neurofeedback has been incredible. I, um, as far as um, sleep, I have been sleeping like a rock. Clarity in my thoughts, being able to come up with sentences, my so sentence structure has been incredible. I feel like that I'm uh, more relaxed throughout the day and then getting things accomplished because of it. Now he can sleep on his own, yay, which no supplements and that's been a huge improvement. Slowly we're beginning to see him think through a little better and not respond near as um, aggressively. The American Academy of Pediatrics gives neurofeedback a level one intervention, which is the same as medication and the same as counseling. The average IQ goes up five to 15 points after someone's gone through brain training. ACT scores, the average ACT score goes up two points after going through neurofeedback and the brain training. So that's the great part about what we're able to do is truly teach this brain something new, something different, and help it go in that right direction.